Hello, I'm Danielle Slutsky of the Cyclot Group. Cyclot, the group that creates a data science toolkit in the closure language. And this is a brief update where I'll share our progress in creating a beginner-friendly experience for people who are curious to use Clojure with the data explorations. Uh, what I'm sharing is, of course, as everything we do is joint work with quite a few of us. And maybe I'll mention three people who were involved in different ways. One of them is Carsten Bering, who is very much involved in creating the Nodge toolkit, the main toolkit for data science, creating and nurturing this toolkit. And a couple of other people are Ken Wang and Timothy Prattley, who are involved in the Clay tool for a notebook and data visualization experience, which is part of the toolkit. And in a moment, I will share the screen and we will see a very lightweight, very basic experience of developing closure. And then we will expand this a little bit with a toy data analysis, so to speak, just to see a little bit of a more complete experience. And that's it. That's it for this session. And what we'll see is a certain uh, experience where we create a file and visualize this file as a notebook, this so-called namespace as a notebook experience, as some of us call it. So let us share the screen and look and see. So here we are, I'll share the screen. You see my screen now, and this is the main page of the Nodge toolkit. And uh, you may read about Nodge and I, I'm encouraging you to read and learn more about it. For now, we'll go to the GitHub page of Nodge. And here we have the releases section and we go to the most recent release and download the jar file. The jar file is basically a program, uh, a program that can be run in your machine using Java. You need Java installed in your machine to use that. So let us in a moment use this program to explore and we, we will create a directory where we can work on our little project, a new folder, let us call it Thrive Notch. And here at Try Notch, we will run the terminal. And in the terminal first, let us check that Java is, uh, is available. So can I run Java? Yes, Java is here. Java can be run in my machine. So we write Java minus jar to run the jar file we downloaded. And then we need to, to link to the location of the jar file. It is in the downloads directory, this nodge file. Now we can run. Let us see what happens. So you see that nodge has created a new directory for us, a notebooks directory. If we go to the file manager, you see the notebooks directory. And also it is recommending to create a closure file where we'll put our closure code. So let us do that. So here in this notebook, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll open a text editor. I'll use leafpad, a very basic text editor. I'll write some closure code. Here is a very basic closure expression with some arithmetic. And I'll save this file. And yeah, you remember that's what our terminal was recommending to create a closure file. So I'll save this file and I should put it inside the notebooks directory and call it and maybe try notch.clj because it is a closure file. So I save. And you see, nodge did notice the creation of this file. And now it says, yeah, I'm serving something to the browser. So let us go to, back to our browser and we see, oh, 
our code was evaluated and here is the result. So we see now we have this interaction of our code editing with the rendered notebook we are creating. Maybe let us move a few things around. So here's the browser and where is our code? Here's our leaf pad. Yeah, right. So let's write a little more code. What happens if we compute some more things and save the file again, right? I save the file now. It keeps updating, right? So this way we have this interactive experience where we can learn Clojure and use Clojure. Basically, that's it, right? We can use Clojure, nothing more than that. Sometimes, sometimes part of the joy of Clojure as a Lisp language is that you don't want to see the whole thing computed. You just wish to explore a little thing inside, a little part of your notebook. Imagine you have many of these arithmetic computations, maybe some um, minus and so on. So yeah, you can save and see the whole thing, but you can also focus, you can narrow, narrow your focus. And the way we do it with clay is by adding these comma comma symbols. Comma is considered white space in closure. The closure language ignores these symbols, but here we put them as a notification that we want to see only this part. And when I save the file, I'll see only this computation of four minus five. We can change this and save again and update this little thing. So this is a very interactive dynamic experience we're having now. And that's the narrow option. And the whole thing is what we call live reload, you know, this way where we edit and save and the whole thing loads. This was developed by Ken Wang and developed further by Timothy Pretley. And I'm so grateful to both of them for, you know, for what I've learned from them. And they really affected me in the last few days thinking about this experience. Yeah. So now we're going, going to continue to our second part where we explore a little data analysis workflow. To do that, we will require a few of our closure namespaces, as they are called, where we have some functions we may use. So we can use require, and here we can write a namespace, which is part, or it is all part of the Nodge toolkit. So one thing we'll require is uh, uh, the data sets namespace. Uh, In the Nodge documentation, you can find all that. That's the name of the namespace where we have many functions with that generate data sets of the R data sets collection. Maybe you've not heard about it. And here we'll alias this to R data sets. So we can use just this name, R data sets, to refer to this um, namespace. Now, when I save the file, it updates, it takes a moment to load this new namespace, and then we can use it. Maybe in the, in the meantime, I'll clean up here and let us maybe, uh, yeah, save again to clean up. And now let us use one function from this namespace. You know, if you use a, a, a more a sophisticated editor with a fuller development environment, it will guide you and help you find the functions. But here, I just wanted to, you know, demonstrate a very simple uh, user experience. So in our data sets, there is a function called ggplot2 economics um, long. That's a name of a data set we're going to use. And yeah, and where well, we can save the file and see Oh, right, our data sets. You see, that's what happens when I have a mistake. It is not so bad to see. Yeah, I did have a like, little mistake in the name I gave it, so let us try again. Right, so now we see this function. When we call the function, it returns this data set. This is a great collection of data sets that our friend Karsten Bering has created uh, based on the R data sets. 
collection. And, you know, um, we can check the metadata of this function just, you know, to learn more about it. And so if I ask for the metadata of this function and save, or oh, yeah, or maybe let us use our comma, comma practice so we can narrow to this. And you see the metadata adds more information and it also has this link to the documentation about it. So yeah, maybe we can, uh, you know, open this link and see, oh yeah, this is a data set of economic time series in the US. And right, so so yeah, maybe we'll remove that for now. No, actually, let us keep it. So that's our data set. Let's explore a little bit. We can give a name to the data set. Let us call it uh, TS or well, data set, maybe. So we save now. Now we can use the tablecloth library to explore the data a little bit. So I'll use the tablecloth API namespace. And it has many functions to explore data sets. So for example, I can ask for the head of the data set. Maybe let us, as we did earlier, let us focus on that. So you see now that's the head of the data set. That's so nice. Tablecloth can explore a lot. Now we pause for a moment. The cat wants to get inside. So I'll be back in a moment. Yeah, here we are again. Right, so let us actually see what we have here. So looking back into the whole data set, oh yeah, I'll remove the narrow. We don't want to narrow here again. So looking into the whole data set, we see there is this unemployed uh, value here in the, in the variable column. So you see when the variable equals unemployed, this is the unemployment series throughout the years and months and day. And so we want to, you know, narrow to focus our analysis on that. So it is common to use the so-called threading macro, which is like a pipe in other languages to create pipelines of operations. So we can begin with a data set and using tablecloth, select the rows where um, we have the value of the variable column equals to unemployed. So this is one way to do it. And yeah, again, I can narrow here the computation, maybe like that. So now we see, yeah, we did select just the unemployed columns. Sorry, just the unemployment rows. Let us maybe give a name to this. Let us call it unemployment. That's the subset we care about today. Right. So we save and and yeah and maybe uh, let us see the head of unemployment Ooh, right unemployment i have typos sometimes unemployment un m <laughs> right un employment. Thank you. Right. So we have the unemployment subset. Now let us visualize this, this subset as a time series. To do this, we'll use the table plot library, yet another library, which is part of the Nodge toolkit. So we require cycloj.tableplot.v1.plotly will alias this as plotly. When I save the file, it takes a moment to load this 
Plotly API, which allows us to create Plotly plots. And then we can create another pipeline. So yeah, maybe just for fun, you know, we can have the whole thing in one pipeline. So we will even remove this and have one pipeline where we first select for the rows and then we visualize them. So in the uh, uh, Plotly API, we can do something like Plotly, layer lines to draw a line for the economic series. And we need to provide the x-axis. The x-axis the x will be the date, of course. And the y-axis will be the, the value, which is the unemployment value at that date. Right? So here we close the parentheses and save. And when we save, oh, did we save? Oh. I think. Something is not right. Oh. I'm looking at the parentheses. Yeah, usually in a closure friendly text editor, these will be taken care of. Right, yeah. I did have a mistake counting the parentheses. Yeah. And here, of course, layer line. Right, thank you. Right, so this works now, and we can add the comma, comma to narrow, and we get the plot. Right, so you see, of course, I recommend finding a good editor that knows how to guide you with closure code, so you'll not be embarrassed as I am with the little mistakes. But uh, that's the point, that we don't need much to actually learn the language and try it out. And now, you know, we, you know when we have this, um, we can keep going and add some uh, decoration. So yeah, maybe let us make it colored by brown color. And maybe, yeah, let's look into that. Yeah, so it is brown now, and let, let us maybe uh, make, the mark, make the mark size five, not five, maybe three. Oh yeah, maybe not brown, maybe, maybe green. Right, so you see, you can explore, you can keep exploring. And basically that's the point, right? That's the point of closure as a lisp. We can focus, we can narrow to a little part of our whole story and explore just this part, visualize that just this part. And that was a basic overview, you know, of a very basic experience and we're really, really looking to hear your feedback about all that, you know, what you think. And this could be taken to many, many different variations, many different ways to take Ken Wang's uh, live reload experience and make it, uh, adjust it in different ways to narrow and expand and so on. And I, I'm, I'm so grateful to Timothy Prattley who, who found the, these clear principles of making things very simple and clear as Timothy always does. And so now we have this very clear beginner-friendly experience we will be using in the coming weeks and beyond. And yeah, thank you for listening. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to hear your feedback and, uh, we will update more about other details of the whole thing in the, in the coming days and further. Take care for now and see you soon.